destiny to defend it. And my die, the die of my destiny is already cast. This is the path I will follow till my dying day. The Bible says, when oh, men slept, an enemy came. But the enemies will not come on my watch because I am not about to sleep. Jesus died, and among many of his by the byproducts or the impacts of his sacrifice is that you may be anointed. You're asking the Lord to unlock the fellowship of the anointing. The believer is no longer natural. And we want to begin to work in that dimension that Jesus died to bring us into. It doesn't matter if you are starting as a bricklayer, like Joseph. And sure, nobody tampers with your dream. Hide it. Hide the dream where depression will not get to. Hide the dream where circumstances will not touch. I mean, hide it. Put it somewhere where your afflictions cannot touch. Your dream needs to be intact if you win. says i indeed i baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than me the latchet of his sanders i'm not worthy to bear this personality he will baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire so i taught them how to pray so that the baptizer could come and give an impartation of what he had in quantum and as they were praying that prayer I also showed them that when the apostles were praying for people to connect with the Christ for baptism he laid, they laid hands on them so they don't in that fellowship they don't know what laying of hands means they believe that if you are laying hands on people you are transmitting witchcraft but I had to show them from the Bible they laid what? their yeah. hands Then the power of God broke out. Orthodox fellowship became Pentecostal. As the power of God broke out, there was a lady towards my left. She was not the Holy Ghost she received. She, the power of God, agitated. This, the, she was a vessel for demons. There were demons that had found an abode in a vessel. And they had been there for a very long time. They had made a, a sitting room in her chambers, in her vessel. Made a kitchen. They have made arrangements to be there for a long time. They have put rock inside of her spirit man and they were just having a great moment. <laughs> and there was nothing that suggested that there was demonic activity around her life up until that time. Until we brought in another element. He a how God what? We introduced a different substance into the fellowship life and then suddenly there was a mighty agitation and the power of God was so potent that when he struck the lady she blanked out and she would breathe for some time and then breathing would be suspended the breathing was irregular in fact it was so much that when the service ended people went home rejoicing she was still in that state so the the parents say well we know this is the power of God but pastor we and you will sit here until our daughter revives. revives. You see, hallelujah, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now you can run church, you can run church and everybody, people that are possessed are there in the choir among the elders. They are there in membership. In fact, they are taking over the departments and it's by the inspiration of demons that the entire system is running. And everybody comes and says, Yes, yes, Kato, yes, Kato, yes, Kato. <laughs> Meanwhile, demons are everywhere. <coughs> Until we introduce another element. You can't prepare too much for that element. When it comes, it exposes. When it comes, it is philanthropy. And that's what Jesus was doing. The hideouts of demons. Demons could no longer stay there. He had something to throw out. And if that introduction comes into their abode, it causes quite explosions. Things are agitated. Demons that were calm suddenly begin to seize the vocal cords of men and begin to speak like ah. So we had to wait. I had to wait with the parents. And after three hours, she revived. She shook like the pop and revived. 
So when she revived, I, I, I took her to the corner. The strange things she told me that night, because she told me in confidence, that's why I will not say it here. The things they did in witchcraft. But you know what? When the philanthropist comes, if it takes you, there's no price too much to pay. If it takes you five years, go for it. When the anointing comes, you can't hide it anymore. It will speak volumes. It will speak. I, I just came from the village. I went there. My mom was excited seeing me. I said, oh, there's a program I came for. We came for a program. Yeah, dress up. Let's go. And we went there. And it began to rain. The first thing I did was I bound the rain. Because in my work with God, I have authority over the elements. Yeah, it's one of the things I do. I know how to. If you, if you want, I, are you with me? If you, if you want to do your traditional wedding and you don't want rain, just invite me. Say, come. Come. Do it in August. It will be dry. You know, when I was asking your mom to help us get the convocation square for the crusade, she said, Pastor, there's rain. I, I said, leave the rain to us. That's what we do. That's, we, that's, oh my God. So when I came there, we had to The rain was blotted out. That's how we started our, our job. People did not come for service because of rain. So the few that came, we introduced the element. As the element was coming into the congregation, one lady took off from the congregation. Ushers had to. You know, those people were there. They, the people were there. They were in the choir. They were there. Nothing was happening. Witches. People that practiced black arts. They were in church. And they were comfortable for so long. And God has shown me mercy. In that I get invited. I've even preached in the Catholic Church. Yes, I preached. The father finished his own side of the service. And then handed the service to me. And everybody was orderly. We were very orderly when we started. And then subsequently agitations began to take place. Because we introduced something. We introduced something. It was a Lent. It was a time of Lent. So they said I should not say praise the Lord in my sermon. I said, oh. <laughs> I come as silly man. You can introduce in something. With, you can introduce something without saying praise the Lord. Your philanthropy can prosper without using church jargon. After the service, they gave me a note and said, they say, you said praise the Lord twice. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the next day, because they gave me so many rules, so I obeyed the, the rules the first night. Don't do this, don't do this. And you know, me, I like walking. When I preach, say, no, no, that's not. When you want to preach, the body should make you <laughs> don't move. <laughs> so I tried that. I tried that for one night. And then the second night, I knew that was the last night. <laughs> I introduced something there. And when the thing was introduced, it was so powerful. That I, me myself, no, I know I say praise the Lord seven times, but they didn't remember. They didn't remember. No note. And the person that was supposed to count how many times was on, on ground because something was introduced. Witches could keep tormenting you until you introduce something. Your neighbor's witchcraft will influence whether you pass your examinations on campus. Until you introduce something. When you introduce that thing, witches can't handle it. Okay. In the night, we finished praying, slept. And a witch came to me in the dream. I said, So, you are the one that says, 
will not rest. I was just watching. Then he brought three, three witches that were shaved. That it was my prayer that shaved them. <laughs> and they were burnt. Some of them were burnt by the side. Burnt black. One, the mouth was. That, that, see, see what I did. Eh? See what I did. I saw something like a village that was smoking with fire. I said, I'm the one that destroyed them. And you know what pained her? She said, and now, it's as if it's every day I want to be doing it. <laughs> if witches have not started appearing to you like this, you are not a philanthropist. You are not going about. You, are not, you don't have anything to give. So, there's no... In fact, they now, the, the witch now said, when they bind people, at least I should have allowed them to suffer small so that the people will say at least they are doing something. They, them, they would have, they won't have been so angry. Then later I break the yoke. He said, <laughs> now it's every day that I claim to be doing this thing. Now. That they are going to secure new weapons. Oh. <laughs> you know what? Which is they are the basest level of terrorists. They run faster when there is opposition. But they are terrorists. That's what they do. They can appear to you and terrorize you and do some things just to confuse you. If you don't know the truth, you run away from witches. But you see, Jesus did not have problem with witches. The thing is that it was God that anointed him. His business was with God. And what God did was that God anointed him. Anointed him with the Holy Ghost. Anointed him with power. He went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. There is something about that verse I want to pick out. Just one thing. The Bible says that men were oppressed of the devil. That's what I want to pick out. What is oppression? He went about doing good and what? Healing all that were what? Oppressed of the devil. Why could he do that? Because God was with him. What's oppression? It's harsh control. A control that is established against the will of a person. Harsh control. Compelled control. I need to tell you a story about oppression. Because one of the things that God will be doing tonight, he'll be putting an end to oppression. If the ministry of Jesus is still continuing, if that ministry is still on today, then the anointing that was upon him, if that anointing is still here today, the same things that the anointing did on Jesus, the anointing will do upon any man that God has put it upon because God does not give you the anointing and allow you to operate it yourself. He gives you the anointing and he stays with you because God was with him. God will now attach himself to you to help you, aid you in the administration of that spiritual deposit that he puts upon your life. I've seen too many people suffer. And uh, you see, this suffering we're talking about is not because you are illiterate. It's just because God, you have not been able to sufficiently build your abode around God. And so many unfortunate things get to happen to people. Meanwhile, that's why God has anointed us. He called us and anointed us because he loves the people. So if the people have not yet gotten to a point where they can access him directly, alleviate their sorrows by the anointing. With the hope that when the yokes are broken, they will be able to find the pathway to navigate to God and find God 
for themselves. The purpose of the anointing is not so that you can be a superstar, an actor, a performer. But God uses that instrument to break the yokes upon men with the hope that your life will direct them to him and the relationship that he wants to establish with them through that act platform from whence he can begin to cultivate that relationship with every man, every woman walking on the streets. Hallelujah. Now, you see, the Bible says that there was this, um, if you do, if you, if you do microbiology, and we draw your blood, we'll take a sample of your blood, and we subject it to a few tests, and we find plasmodium fasciparum in your bloodstream. Hallelujah. Right there, we develop a culture, a habitat, where we can, that is conducive for plasmodium fasciparum that is in your blood. And then we begin to test not plasmodium. Are you with me? Are you with me? All right. We begin to test it with um, with atameta. Oh, okay. The one you know is chloroquine. We we'll test plasmodium falciparum with chloroquine, and then we we'll discover that upon administering chloroquine, it took two weeks for it to die. Is that clear? We we'll change the drug here. Another culture is here. We we'll apply, introduce another drug. Huh? We introduce another drug. Then we see that um, um, what do we pialaxine is more effective because we have plasmodium, fasciparum, malaria, and vivax. And some of the drugs are good for, for vivax, some are good for malaria, some are good for fasciparum. So when you introduce the drug, you will see the effectiveness of the drug in, in dealing with that bacteria so you now prescribe that drug and say okay the bacteria is sensitive to this drug that drug and that is what informs the doctor on the prescription that he gives are you with me all right um that scripture gave us an analysis of the potency of the anointing in the culture he said, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good. Healing all that were what? Oppressed of the devil. It means that the anointing has high sensitivity to oppression. If it finds oppression, eh, it doesn't heal some of it. It is very sensitive to, in, in fact, it is so opposed to oppression. And so if there's even a little oil on your life, a little anointing on your life, it does so much damage to oppression. So much damage. Of all the things God hates, he hates oppression so much that he made oppression so sensitive to the anointing. If the anointing should come upon the scene, oppression gives way. But many people are living in oppression and they don't know. And that's why we need to enlighten us this evening about what oppression is. Healing all that what were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Number one, turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7. I'll do this for another 15 minutes, then we'll begin to pray. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, chapter number 7. Hallelujah. 